Hello everyone, welcome back to the History Through KSP. Today we'll be doing a short look into the V-1 rocket, or AKA Buzz Bomb, and that's what we're looking at right now in my aircraft hangar and KSP. Uh, mine's almost to scale, it's 9 meters long, just like the original V-1 uh, pulse jet. Um, it's actually the only pulse jet ever mass produced because they're so inefficient and they just aren't worth making. Um, they're super cheap and they're super, or super loud, but they're also very, very light, and so it was a great uh, engine for this kind of aircraft. Um, the first valveless pulse jet was patented in 1906 by the Russian engineer uh, Kurvedin. Sorry if I get some of these wrong. Um, the Germans then took that design and increased uh, its efficiency and that's how it ended up being uh, part of their military. Um, so it had a really early version of autopilot and as you can see here I built uh, a rocket sled ramp instead of using the steam piston engine or steam catapult that they actually used which back in 1942 that catapult could get the aircraft up to 200 miles per hour uh, I had to add weight to the front just to keep it stable um, this this design worked well for me in KSP and it uh, allowed me to kinda get the aircraft moving because it needs to get up to speed before it can actually fly and so I really enjoyed building that uh, ramp and making it work um, it had early autopilot uh, it had a gyroscope that controlled you on pitch, a magnetic compass that controls the azimuth, which I just learned what that is. That's the distance around the globe in a circle. The barometric reader controls the altitude, a uh, compressed air to control the servo motors, and then an odometer to track distance. And as you can see here, here's my other launch uh, platform that uh, the Germans thought about doing, or the Nazis, I mean. And they were going to put it on top of their prototype jet bomber that they built the prototype jet bomber, but they never actually got the V1 on top of it. But this is what they were going to do uh, or had plans to do. And so I wanted to show that launch platform in action as well. Um, the V1 had three fuses. Uh, they had an electrical one, which was on impact, a mechanical one that was slow acting. So it actually allowed for the, it, uh, it was mechanical. So it had like a three second delay or two second delay. So it allowed the bomb to go into the ground and then explode. Um, it had delay action, which would go off two hours after launch to prevent anyone from ever capturing this design or getting it. And so now you can see uh, I'm about to go take uh, this aircraft uh, or the ramp out for a roll and show you guys the launch. Uh, I think it's really cool. Um, and so there were 30,000 of these built from 1944 to 1945, which is a significant amount. Uh, considering how little resources the Germans had, or the Nazis had at the very end of the war. Um, the, actually, the first prototype was dropped from a, F, a FW-200 Condor, which is a massive plane, and I was very surprised to see that, and that was really cool. Um, it's a steel body with plywood wings. It's got a weight of 4,700 uh, 4, pounds. It's carrying a warhead that uh, weighs about a ton. Um, it's got a top speed of 400 miles per hour. Um, as you can see, like the the rocket's like kind of dragged on the aircraft. It's it's really hard to get the parachutes timed so that it pulls it down rather than straight back. But it still it managed to look pretty all right. And as you can see, I'm flying towards an island to kind of like simulate the 200 mile distance. Um, it had 42 impulses per second, which is so low because now modern jets have around 3,000 impulses per second. And so this thing is kind of like puff 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 puff, which also gave it it's very very loud noise which I'll play a clip for you uh, right here and as you can see it's super loud it had 3300 newtons of thrust so this thing could actually get up some really high speed and a lot of aircraft had trouble uh, taking it down in World War II because with its cruising altitude of 2000 feet which is super low and this is pretty I'm actually almost around that height I try and maintain around 900 meters uh, in this video just to show you guys how low that actually is. Um, it had a 25% accuracy rating, it wasn't very accurate, but since they created 30,000 of them, they just were doing the shotgun method and hoping something would get to where it was supposed to go. Uh, it was used primarily against British forces, a uh, very late war. It was actually more effective than the Nazis' blitz on London two years earlier using their own bombers and aircraft, because these they could just shoot so many of these cruise missiles that eventually they were just going to get hit there's a lot of issues with it though, it had a 19 mile landing radius in the beginning, so the very early versions never got close to where they were supposed to. Um, that improved all the way down to 7 miles, which is pretty, it's still a big circle, but it's 
extremely impressive. Um, and uh, the engine cutoff during the final dive was a big problem. So when it started to dive, the airflow increased too much and it disturbed the compressed air and so the engine would just die. And so that's why it was known as, bu as the buzz bomb because people would hear that engine buzzing until it's dive. And when they heard the, the noise cut, that means they knew it was coming down, which is really scary. Um, they couldn't take off on their own power and they were still very efficient. So like there were some of those problems, but the steam catapult they created was very effective and so that really helped some of the solve some of the problems. And as you can see I already got to the island. Um I'll probably speed up some of this footage so if it's out of order or kind of wonky, that's why. But as you can see it, it's just it's also a very fun aircraft to fly, a KSP physics engine. I think this is one of the most fun aircraft in KSP I have built because it just it just flies so well. And as you can see here, uh, I'm going to show you the other launch method, which is uh, using the oh, what was it called? the Arado AR-234 jet bomber prototype. And this is actually really close to what it looked like. Um, I think I'll throw a photo up here or before in the hangar. But yeah, it's, it's, it was supposed to be a very good bomber. It had great specs. Um, they only made one or two. So it never really got off the ground, but I tried to do my best to make it look accurate. Uh, it had a glass front dome, so I just used a capsule. Um, it took a long time to get the fuselage right because it was a wide circle. And there's not a lot of good parts for that in KSP, so I just did my best. And we'll be speeding this up so you guys can get to the launch. Um, yeah, man, this aircraft also flew very beautifully. And I was uh, very happy with the result of it. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, it was a really fun video for me to make, and I really enjoyed it. And just trying to get everything to work. It's extremely challenging. Uh, and let me know if you'd want more like this.